Hi everyone, Ashton here, and welcome to Precision Horology. Today we're going to be looking at pivot burnishing in the Jacko tool, or the refinishing of train wheel pivots. The Jacko tool is a pretty simple tool. Uh, we have our end here that we're pointing to, which takes the wheel, or the pivot of the wheel, uh, that we won't be refinishing. Uh, and then we have our drum that moves in and out, uh, so that the wheel can be turned. I'll explain that in more detail later. We have our drum end, which takes the pivot. Uh, this moves back and forth, so we can adjust exactly where uh, the pivot of the wheel sits. Uh, this drum here has a various different sizes that can be used, uh, depending on the size of the train wheel pivot and the size that we need to get it to. We can see here that we have various different drums for a variety of train wheel pivots. So we can go from very large uh, pivots in the train uh, to very small escape wheel pivots uh, that can be repolished. Here we can see the very large pivots uh, being used. A good variety uh, is good, but we're going to be using a relatively small pivot uh, for the train wheel that we have um, in this exercise. Well, how is the Jacko tool driven? Well, it's actually bow driven. Uh, we have a small plastic bow here uh, with actually fishing line tied on. Uh, and we loop it around the drum at the back here. And we twist it and we drive it forward with our bow. Uh, we drive, move our bow relatively quickly back and forth and it helps to rotate the train wheel uh, back and forth quickly so that we can get a good speed going so that we can burnish the pivot. We can see here uh, the spike that's sticking out, that actually sits through the train wheel spokes uh, and helps to move the wheel back and forth so that it can be propelled forward and backwards uh, so that we can get to polish. Well, here we can see our offending train wheel pivot. We can see that it looks a bit like a mushroom. We have the middle section, um, which is significantly thinner than the top and bottom section of the pivot. And generally, it really just looks like a mess. We want this pivot to be straight, uh, beautifully polished, uh, to have a nice... Um, finish on it so that uh, it reduces friction and reduces amplitude. So the tool we'll be using is the burnisher. The burnisher is basically a small file uh, that's very very fine um, that helps to polish the workpiece but it also hardens the steel as we go uh, as it's burnishing and we use some cutting oil. We can see there's various different sides. Uh, we have two um, the two broad sides are flat cutting sides and they have uh, sharp corners so that we can get in and make nice pivots. Uh, and we have one side that actually has a slightly rounded corner we can see there uh, if we want to burnish conical uh, escape wheel pivots. Well, so now that we've looked at uh, what we're going to be using, let's get the uh, bow mounted up in the Jacko tool uh, and let's get the wheel inserted uh, so that we can seat it properly uh, and then we can start polishing. So here's the train wheel that's going to be put in place. Uh, it's actually from a, a Tudor date model and it is a third wheel that we're going to be polishing today. So we mount our uh, good pivot or the pivot that we won't be polishing um, in the back uh, of the Jacko tool like so. I do apologize for my hand in the way here but uh, I needed to push the, the other drum forward. We slowly bring the drum forward to receive uh, the bad pivot uh, and we seat it nice and snug up to the shoulder so that we can get a good um, seating for that pivot there. We can then bring our spike forward so that it engages with the spokes of the wheel. So with everything checked in place, uh, we can bring the burnisher to the workpiece uh, and get ready to burnish or polish these pivots. Uh, again, we want to just make sure everything's seated correctly uh, and then we can get to work burnishing. So we move our left hand uh, up and down to drive the wheel back and forth to get that speed going with our bow. And we move our right hand back and forth uh, to polish the pivot. So we're actually moving the wheel or the pivot of the wheel at the same time as we're moving the burnisher itself. And we want to make sure the burnisher is nice and tight up against uh, the shoulder of the pivot so that we get a nice clean line in there. We don't want rounded corners, we want nice sharp corners. So we can continue to move back and forth, back and forth with our burnisher uh, and back and forth, back and forth with our bow. 
So at this point, we take the piece off and inspect the pivot, uh, but we still have some ways to go. Uh, so we mount it back in the burnishing tool and we can continue to polish. Again, we always wanna make sure that the burnish is nice and flat um, and true with the workpiece. And we also wanna make sure that uh, it's um, seated well in that shoulder as well. Well, another quick trip to the microscope to check that pivot. And uh, it appears we still have a little ways to go. Uh, so we'll continue to burnish uh, and keep polishing up that pivot until we get the uh, desired result that we're looking for. And success. We're happy with our desired result. Here is the freshly burnished or polished pivot. We can see that it has uh, a very... Um, reflective shiny surface well, which is great for amplitude um, which means we're going to have good power coming through the train we can see that it's uh, straight up and down uh, there's no mushrooming effect and we have nice sharp shoulders as well so this is how we want all pivots to look uh, in a wheel train um, so if we have to burnish uh, this is what we'll do we need to make sure that we don't take too much material off because if we do we'll have to go down a jewel size in the train uh, so that we don't have too much side shake and here we have a before and after of our train wheel pivots. The left, the before mushroom pivot, and the right, the after. It's interesting, I'm often asked, well, how much is a vintage watch service going to cost? And the answer is always the same. Each watch is individual. There's no base price because, as you can see, uh, vintage watches usually need a lot of work. This is not an uncommon sight to see pivots that look like this. Uh, pieces need rebushing, repivoting. It really just depends uh, on the individual watch. And there we have it. That's how we use our Jacko tool uh, and successfully burnish and polish train wheel pivots. Well, stay tuned for the next video in this series. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified about the next video. Feel free to leave a comment and share with friends. Thanks again and see you next time.